Let's look at the common ear problems that you'll encounter in the PLAB exam and also importantly as a foundation doctor. We'll break it up into three parts starting from the external to the middle and ending at the inner ear. Right, in the external ear, firstly you can have an infection in the external ear. This is called otitis externa. This is common in patients who have a history of swimming or those in a humid environment. They have serous fluid discharge from the ear an itch that is followed by pain and moving the earlobe causes pain. The cause of this is staph aureus and the management is topicals. If there's a perforation you'll give ciprofloxacin and if there's a pussy discharge you'll give a topical cream that is a combination of gentamicin and hydrocortisone. Necrotizing otitis externa or malignant otitis externa as the name suggests is more serious. It occurs in diabetics and those who are immunocompromised. The culprit is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. You can identify this from black skin on the ear and the patient can also have a facial nerve palsy. The management is to refer to ENT and give them antibiotics. Then lastly for the external part of the ear, earwax buildup. The management are these four points. First, use a softener such as sodium bicarb. Then secondly, irrigate it. If it persists, use eardrops and last resort is referred to ENT. Next, let's look at the middle ear. Otitis media is the infection of the middle ear. There are two types, with effusion and without effusion. Without effusion is painful and usually follows an upper respiratory tract infection. On exam by otoscope, you will see a red, yellow or cloudy bulging tympanic membrane. You might find fluid discharge if the tympanic membrane is perforated. The management is usually conservative if it's viral and if it's bacterial then oral amoxicillin. Otitis media with effusion is painless with bilateral hearing loss. Common scenarios that this can present as, especially in the exams, are children with 1. Poor hearing and their parents complain they watch TV really loud or they have to repeat words to them. 2. Children with speech problems and 3. Children with a history of enlarged adenoids. On exam you will find different findings. You will see a retracted tympanic membrane, bubbles or a fluid level and you will see a yellow membrane. The diagnosis is confirmed with audiogram. If the child is less than 3 months you will reassure and review. If they are older you will have to refer to surgery for them to put in a grommet and if that fails then hearing aids will be needed. Failing to recognize otitis media with effusion can result in a child having permanent conductive hearing loss. Lastly the inner ear is where you get the more complex problems starting with Meniere's. This presents as deafness vertigo and tinnitus with a feeling of fullness in the ear. This is a result of fluid buildup in the inner ear. Acoustic neuroma is a non-cancerous tumour originating from the Schwann cells. It occurs at the vestibular cochlear nerve and as it grows it compresses on the surrounding cranial nerve. This includes the facial and the trigeminal nerve, thus resulting in the cranial nerve signs that you will see along with deafness, vertigo and tinnitus. Otosclerosis is a problem arising due to poor formation of the ossicles. It is typically seen in young and pregnant patients. And you also have the problems of deafness vertigo and tinnitus. Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo causes short bursts of vertigo upon movement of the head. This is due to crystals in the semicircular canal. Whole pikes maneuver is used as an easy way to manage this problem. Vestibular neuritis is the inflammation of the vestibular nerve. It has an abrupt onset of nausea and vomiting and is usually after a viral infection. It is important to know that the vertigo is present at rest and is aggravated by head movements in vestibular neuritis. So patients will tell you the room feels like it is spinning all the time and is worse when their heads move. This is different to BPPV where patients will only experience the sensation of spinning when their heads move. Then lastly, labyrinthitis is the inflammation of the vestibular labyrinth and has similar signs to vestibular neuritis but in addition of sensory neural hearing loss together with tinnitus. These are the basic explanations of the common problems you'll find in the PLAB exam and also as a foundation doctor. 
If you find it helpful, click the like button, subscribe to the channel and comment below for more videos.